Hi, I'm Chris Roberts. I'm the project director of Squadron 42, and I'm sitting here with David Haddock, the lead writer. Hello. And also Sean Tracy, the director of global content, uh, who's there. overseeing both Squadron and uh, Star Citizen. And we're here to talk about the Vertical Slice, which we just uh, premiered a little earlier today on the holiday live stream. Uh, so here we are opening up uh, in Odin's system, and uh, we're sort of est we're sort of establishing the scene and cutting us up, catching us up on the story. Dave, do you want to? Uh, yeah. So basically, the uh, we're because we kind of jumped you and dropped in the middle of the story. We wanted to give you a little bit of context, just so you could kind of understand a bit of like what the conversations were ha happening and you know what they were talking about and stuff like that. So yeah. So we sort of this is. You know, not at the very beginning of the game, but I would say it's sort of, you know, I don't know, like beginning of the second act, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Uh, or it's like, so you've 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 already uh, arrived on the the Stanton. You've you've sort of bedded in. You've started to fly some missions. So mm -hmm. the very first time you actually fly a mission is what we had with the IGN teaser, where yeah. old man says, "Who the hell are you?" Which is kind of fun because the whole game is about getting Mark Hamill or old man's approval, which is very <laughs> cool. Um, so here we are. We're waking up um, in the uh, sort of sleeping quarters area of the Idris, and uh, you know each of these uh, cubicles they've got their own little shutters so you can get asleep. And uh, we are um, kind of getting waking up, and uh, we're you know one of the things to think and remember about what we're going for for Squadron, and ultimately we'll do the same for Star Citizen. Is we want everything to be very tactile, to be very sort of. You can, you know, what you can wear or what you can carry is what you can do. So we don't want this sort of RPG infinite bag of holding. You can have all these items. So here we want you, if you're going to put on your BDUs from what you're sleeping in, you actually do it. Uh, you put on a flight suit later, the same thing. And, uh, uh, you know, here we are. And uh, this is, you know, a, a more full version of the AI system that we've called Subsumption that's running sort of the missions and the AI and the characters. And you're seeing a lot more of their actions around here than, say, you've you we would have seen maybe in what we've put in 3.0 in the in the PU. Yeah, and actually it even made the the, the captures challenging because of all these AI doing uh, very different things every time. It's not it's not perfectly deterministic, so it's not he's not always at the uh, microwave actually getting himself you know something to eat. Um, yeah, no, no, definitely. We've actually had we've had captures where we were having conversations and we were not close enough in the conversation, so the AI cut in front of us <laughs> like photo bomb, which yeah, was exactly. uh, you know it's it, it's quite funny actually. So we've uh, you know we've had this whole we, it's not implemented here, but we we have on the list of things to do to sort of have some AI tech that sort of knows that you're talking to someone and, yeah, and walks around the back of you instead of cut you know finds the shortest <laughs> path between the Lines two of you. Um, so yeah, so we, we've woken up, uh, we've gotten our BDUs, we're just, uh, right now, the idea was to sort of show a little bit of the Idris. We're actually not showing all of it, it's pretty massive. There was sort of the Idris special that showed a bit more of it because, you know, there's the med bay and, you know, there's a cargo room that we didn't go in that we just walked past. It's a missile room, there's a hole down, there's a ha hangar for the Argo below and the gravity generator below. Um, so it's, it's pretty good. Sir, if you're not too busy. Wondering about the combat you saw during your last mission. And so here's the first exa example of sort of our sort of fluid cinematic conversation system. So uh, I'm not sure we really move around here, but you can maybe see it in some of the other parts we move around. His head will track us. He'll look at us. Um, it's, you know, the quality of the characters is cinematic level quality and we there's no Absolutely. difference so like yeah. there aren't really any uh we don't have any pre-rendered cinematics so we do occasionally we'll take the camera and play out a sequence but you're actually still present it's all running in the engine live totally uh, but that's why the you know why lars uh is looks so looks so good here i mean the thing that always strikes me even watching this now like i mean it's it's interesting hearing him seeing the great animation of like him talking, but it's actually the pauses in between it when he's listening to you because it really seems like he's processing mm. what you're saying, which is just fantastic. Yeah, well, no, I mean, you know, in fact, you know, I think in, if you look at film or everything, it's so almost like the reaction of someone tells you much more about what's going on rather than what people are saying. And with you know the fact that we did this full-on performance capture and facial capture, we're getting all the performance that we're getting on the stage, and you sort of see the subtleties where yeah, exactly you know someone's listening to you and you're telling him this, and he's yeah he's uh, like uh, if you if all. you pick that other conversation option for example, like he has a little smirk when you say make a little bit of a joke on it. That's just it's it's really interesting. Sure, and maybe to mention too, the, we've got a bit of you know as we walked into the bridge, we got a bit of stutter and these kind of things. So it, just to just to remind everyone that this is this is a live capture off of, of a gameplay build. We were not faking anything. 
you know, uh, just because we were going to pre-record this didn't mean we were going to fake or fix time step or uh, uh, do anything that you would mm, you'd normally do in a game capture just to kind of make everything look perfect, right? Because this is the reality of exactly where this game is at, at this exact moment, but um, we just barely start to scratch the surface on optimization on this particular stuff. If you're playing the 3.0 pre, you you know that we've you know been focusing on that uh, level of optimization. Well, yeah, when you get there. And I would say yeah. So that's a lot of reasons you'll see variable frame rate during the playback of 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 the you know this portion of the mission that we're going through. Uh, and yeah, uh, we will. You know, our goal is to, uh, for a high spec machine, run this at 60 frames a second, and low spec to be at least 30 frames a second. Um, this is actually pretty cool because we're see it on the Idris, which is a massive. It's basically a flying level <laughs> inside the coil, which is this volumetric cloud tech flying around Shubin uh, Arkin Hi. Station. This is Shubin nice uh, uh, mining facility, Peter and uh, which is eight kilometers in size. So Sorry, just the sense of immersion and scale is is pretty Sounds cool. Here, and that was Cas Fallon, our, our comms officer. Yeah, uh, that you have some theories about, Dave? Or uh, no, no, you know, she's <laughs> just, just straight professional. You know, it's just says hello, but then gets back to her job. <laughs> and uh, so here we are. We're going to head down now um, off the bridge. And so the bridge has access on both sides, stairs on both, and there's the elevator in the middle that we came up. Uh, we walk past, uh, you know, a marine on guard, and the, you know, part of the basic subsumption there's what we call wild lines. So they'll see you. They'll say hello. I think uh, I saw some memes or jokes on Reddit. Lieutenant, so yeah. lieutenant, lieutenant, lieutenant. They're very uh, respectful. But we actually have rank. we have uh, a lot of um, variation of greetings and different characters all have their own custom stuff. So and also, I mean, ultimately, it'll be sort of reputation based too. So yeah, like so the better you're doing, the more people will acknowledge you. Yeah, and if you're not, they're not, or they're they're curt with you. And so <laughs> right there was uh, actually Gunnar Haynes, which we didn't go and see. So we actually he is part of um, this chapter uh, that you go around but we kind of felt like I mean this is already an hour and six and we're only doing a portion of yeah. what you can do in fact you know the 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 mission we'll do later is sort of one of the optional missions you can do in this this area of stuff and so uh, we sort of felt like an hour or so of gameplay was you know we didn't need another yet another conversation yeah, uh, but if you're playing it there's a lot more so a lot of the the characters uh, that you see all talking and doing stuff it's all this is all systemically driven for a start but um, there's a lot of backstory insight you know you can whoever mm. you want to talk to find out what's going on yeah. with them uh, and really get to know the crew which is you know what we're hoping uh, you'll get a real emotional attachment i to mean the, crow. the amazing thing too is also or if you don't you can just move on to your next mission point like there's that again like it's up to you, you want to like get it. invested right yeah if, you, um, if you're the type who yeah and a good example uh, it, like uh, there was a couple engineers sitting outside the engine room and um, if you stop and I've stopped on my playthroughs and sat there and listened they're talking about Moro how he's a genius for coming up <laughs> with this you know yeah. crazy thing um, and then you come in and you see him here so yeah uh, there's a lot of interchange between the characters which is quite nice and you can get right up close to all of them and uh, they'll all be holding up just like Lars was just like everybody else was um, We've brought, um, you know, what typically was like a hero level sort of character, and we've we've spread that out to a quantity that's well, all just of them, yeah, beyond basically, uh, everyone. Basically, all yeah. the characters. And so everybody's yeah. a hero. There's I mean, no um, background character. Yeah, Maro. He's a. F I mean, he's actually one of my funnest character. Yeah. And here, there's a little bit of tech. So where we're looking around, he he can detect. We got this thing that we call spoil tech, uh, and it can uh, give signals to the AI based on where you're looking. Also. Uh, you may, if you look at uh, running around here in some of the AI, there's points of interest they go by, and they may glance at the point of interest, glance at you as they go by. So it sort of it helps break up the more robotic uh, AI locomotion. And we're still early stages of that, so that's going to yeah. get even. Uh, that's going to get a lot better. But we're really focused on trying to make the behavior and movement of the AI as as good and natural as possible. So this, as far as we're concerned, is still got a long way to go. There's a lot of subtlety. It's all about dialing in the subtlety. So we've moved. If you if you actually go back and look at the Maro tour and look at this, it's totally night and day. Yes. Um, but uh, we're going to go a lot further because for for. For for us, the goal is to really sort of make what we call a sort of fluid cinematic experience. So it sort of feels like you're in a movie, uh, and it has that sort of sense of drama and has that sense of detail and texture. Uh, but you're totally in control, and and that was kind of what I was talking about. And the cinematics where you know you you 
you know, even though they're live and we take the camera control away, you, if you don't want to have that, you can just hit a key and lead back to your point of view and you'll see the actions of the people yeah. doing yeah, from your point of view. Uh, so this would be an example of somewhere you could do this right here. We take over the, the camera cut once we walk in. So this is all gameplay. And you're actually still, you could actually walk into the back of this shot if you wanted to. Yeah. Uh, or you could just go back to your point of view. But we want to have, you know, we've got these, we've got these great actors, great performances. And, uh, you know, you really need to sort of get up there to, to get mm -hmm. it. And yeah, to take in the performance. in this playthrough we did you sort of can see moment i mean there's a great conversation with captain y afterwards uh where you sort of you know you, you get some texture about his son and maybe some sense there's of regret a little monologue and, it's uh, and there's a later one with some uh, omc's prisoners that come in that's really great um so yeah having the ability to sort of take over the camera to get these close-ups to sort of give you a bit more up close detail in the story is great but you can also just cancel out and be just watching this from the point of view we were just seeing Thank there before. Time, well, you were right, Colton. That man is a complete ass. Yeah, the performances of the actors, it's such a different thing to have, you know, these these AAA actors in, in, in game instead of, you know, a hand animated um, guy that was voiced by somebody in the development studio. Do you know what I mean? It just, it changes the game completely. Well, yeah, no, it's fun. I mean, it's fun. And also, you know, we, we shot for over 100 days in the in London, over 15 in 2016, uh, and got up oh, and see. Now, if we stayed here and didn't do this, I do this on my when I'm playing through because I think it's fun. There's about three or four prompts, and we, we always had fun shooting them because the actors would have to, you know, yeah. the, basically it was like the, it, the player was like, totally a troll <laughs> when we shot it because he had to be okay uh, would you like a seat and then there was like old man would say something and then uh, <laughs> you know Why don't you uh, sit Captain down? White would say say something so we have three or four of the encouragements that happen everywhere and, but in the case of uh, a fastest playthrough we, we didn't do that but I do it because I always think it's kind of fun <laughs> so and th this scene without mentioning the RTT tech would be you know not complete that 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 is that has opened up so many different things so, that so we can do. So I mean, do she's with actually down because on she's the flight actually up. down there. Yeah. This is a, that's like a live Skype call happening in the game right now, <laughs> right? Uh, which is super cool. And the same was for Wexler. Like Wexler is sitting there in his office in Shubin that was yep. that we could see out the window. We're flying around. So it was super cool. So and here, you know, here you're in full control. I mean, it just happens to be that um, we were looking at uh, uh, Captain White, but you know, we could come over here. That's Mark's gonna. Or, Old man, as he is in our game, mm -hmm. it's going to head off, and he actually, and, and they all, and everyone that does, we don't cheat in this. They don't like warp. He like pass all the way down, and then he, and you could follow him. And yeah. I've had fun because we have a certain playthrough done, but um, you know he actually changes his outfit and gets his helmet on and goes down and gets into a ship. It's cool. It's been good, sir. And we've still got, uh, we've still got, you know, the last ten, five, ten percent. Just push these faces, push the characters, push the quality just a little bit further. Um, but that last little percentage will always take the time, and we could do it infinitely. There's people. Yeah, I mean, I think we've got some. We got some tech that we're talking about doing on the mm -hmm. the heads and the faces, faces, where there'll be some uh, you know additional simulation beyond mm -hmm. what we just have captured. And it's meant to be subtle stuff, and all of these the, things will make be the subtle. muscles and stuff be better. Yeah, it's um, kind of so like skin jiggling on top of the the, the, the muscles, uh, as well as the blinks. Uh, that was some of the things that you know sometimes called out the blinks. You know, sometimes the same speed of close as open. Which isn't really that that real, uh, but when it's a PCAP performance like this, uh, you, you know the the, the technology just totally shines. No, it's especially crap. I mean, with I, an actor. I like mean, this. I love it. I it's mean, you know, Liam Cunningham's great, and this is a great scene. You really get to, you sort of yeah, it talks about you know, his son. It's nice, and it's yeah. and and we have a lot of these moments with, uh, you know, a lot of the characters in the game because we had such we had like 350 speaking roles in this one <laughs> shot. Yeah, it was role. ridiculous. <laughs> and we and we I think we basically hired every actor we could hire in London. In London, yeah. There's a lot of good ones and. Uh, it was great. That's good advice. But yeah, again, I mean, this was another example, kind of like what I was saying with the Lars thing, like Sir, have you the pauses of, you know, while he listens to you, while he listens to you, while he's thinking, he gets lost in thought and stuff like that. It's just, you know, they really did a great job. With the it. facial animators love to solve those ones too. Yeah, and way. I love oh that because yeah. you can see, it <laughs> yeah, you see, it, you see that pause right there before he says, I t "I've kept you too long." You dismiss Lieutenant. Yeah, yeah and thinking. you can sort of see him thinking it, and it, and and I think Some those stuff. little things. I mean, this is just a very tiny amount of what's in actual Squadron Forty Two. Yeah, I know yeah. when we were locking down all the 
performances and editing it without any of the scenes and without any the rest of the stuff um you know the characters felt really alive and, and uh, i think it's gonna be great again this is the rtt tech being used uh this is uh we got some color light balancing stuff to do so yeah, a lot of the video comes that you see you'll see in this and the rtt is not going to be how it is and the final i mean our goal is because those are that's rendered live he's he's down in the flight control playing his yep. lines and you've got a camera there and it's playing it on you but uh you know the goal is that the rtt looks just like it does when you're here wandering around in the first so we still got some dialing in to do uh, but a lot of this stuff sort of uh you know has come in recently as people know also in uh 3.0 so uh you know it's still pretty early days and the importance of this is was all the was all the functionality everything needs to flow together run together to see you again, Lieutenant. basically anybody needs to be able to start this up and be able to play through you know chapters well i'm not gonna say which ones they were but the the chapters that we're in i'm looking for some new gear what can i get for you and this is chakma he's our sort of ship's weapons master Combat guy nice. who's gonna hook you up with sure. your guns yeah and I, I love i mean this is another one of my goals Multiflex here um case. with this is uh, i'm really uh, you know the tactile i was saying about you put the clothes on durable. um and you know i, I hate this though like, i just look at a screen and i pick my weapons or something where it just feels right. very gamey and just magically uh, appears and, and it magically appears and so this is this is you know yeah and actually in star Citizen and in some shops i'd like to have this level too where people a shopkeeper will put things in front of you uh but you know it's it's great because he actually picks the weapon out and we don't select all? it here but if we went and said what the bearing ar right pa AR, ar rifle he'll go over to because all the different weapons are on the racks behind him and he actually takes it from there and puts it down sure. in front of you uh, but again for in in, in terms of Gemini time of this we decided we didn't want to do mm -hmm. too many right. of the stuff uh, but it's kind of fun and you can also come in here get a weapon go to the shooting range just across the way do some practice shooting i mean you know yeah, I forgot to mention there's a shooting range and an armory as well on the right. Idris. I mean, Idris has got so much stuff. So much. It's yeah. crazy. I mean, honestly, we we got to get the AI crew working for players in the main PU Star Citizen because otherwise it's going to be a very lonely experience in your own fl floating uh, fortress. All? When we all first saw that animation where he does the, uh, when he cocks Checks the weapon, the puts the magazine in his hands, we're all like, oh, yep, Stephen Bender was here. <laughs> he definitely was the very, very um, and this and this is flamboyant. This is kind of a fun <laughs> movie reference and, and <laughs> it's actually an easter egg and, and really the easter egg uh, well i'm not going to tell you how you get it because <laughs> it will not be an option um not from the, the normal, beginning yeah. right uh when you uh when you actually play the proper game but we thought we'd put it in here for fun to say that yeah yes, it was, it was yes. kind of too much to resist if you're walking up to a, a gun guy and asking for weapons yeah to exactly throw in. and and by the way there's quite a few fun easter eggs in uh, oh yeah. squadron that we're not going to talk about and i'll be looking forward <laughs> to seeing everyone discover within i don't know the there's first day or so it gets release yeah there's one in particular that i have a feeling you were thinking about that i'm i'm dying to know if anyone discovers it because it's going to be awesome if they do yeah yeah no i'm sure they will this is <laughs> this is this is uh you know today's gaming and yeah and uh it's true uh, you know everyone shares everything online but uh, yeah no i i'm uh yeah we, we had some fun with it so let's say let's say you know uh, we we all have similar movie tastes <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. made some nods to it. Yeah, we've all got similar sense of humor on all this stuff too. Uh, one of the things when you're walking across that uh, walkway, like those, uh, there's windows that are down to the hangar. You can see all the deck crew and everybody moving around the ships, getting them ready. Um, I quite like the, uh, the the additions to the windows and everything here. Here's Belosa, Belosa. yeah, He's infamous a mop man. <laughs> Best thing about yeah, everyone he's being he's at battle stations. <laughs> He, he's a bit more than he seems, isn't yes, he? Yes, yeah. exactly. Well, I mean, also in the mopping is a bit more than it seems. Um. Yeah. Well, I mean, in fact, I mean, we don't have the mop tech working fully yet. But, <laughs> it's, it's an, it's but he is going to pick up his... He The, the subsumption stuff is he can move pick up his bucket, go around and actually clean up puddles and stuff. Yeah. And that's all, like, kind of procedural. So... Uh, that's uh, done here, that's a just a few yeah. Last It'd be cool. Weeks. It just makes the place more alive. Hey, yeah, totally. We've totally. had a skirmish with the OMC and you've seen how they fly. So again, just little bits that I jump out at me uh, w while we watch this. Right, we're going to improve some of the hair. We're going to improve some eye convergence. Uh, definitely in these. Uh, yeah, and there was, some, there, was some, there was an animation hitching there. I mean, a lot of this stuff yeah. we've gotten oh, the stuff right. in because it's sort of the proof of concept of vertical slice. But a lot of the dialing in the subtleties of it, uh, we haven't had the time to do yet. Of course, we will be doing. Uh, and here, I mean, we just we know what's happening. So uh, on the playthrough, we're kind of wait. waiting for the the <laughs> Argo to come in. But that's all happening live in the game. And then 
we're taking over the car. And if you went back to your point of view, you would see this playing out from the point of view up where you were in the sort of ready room. For me, this is one of the best examples of why having all the faces at the level that we have, all the characters at the level we have, all the performances at the level we have really, really makes a difference to the game. Because this is a you get real invested in this uh, in this cutscene. You can see some subtle emotions that are really really hard to communicate from a game character. For example, being in charge but scared at the same time. Yeah. So you can see these guys are hauling these guys out. The first you know it's pretty easy, and then you know they start to get a little bit nervous and these kind of things. But yeah, I mean again, you can even see it on their faces. Like yeah. it's it to be able to read a face like that is uh, is a tricky thing in most games. No, I've never been in one of these. It's nice. Not as nice as a Bengal, but nice. Move it! Oh, come on, clear out! Yeah, this is, it, was, it, was a it was actually fun to shoot this on the day, wasn't oh, it? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> OMC's going to have to teach you screw tops some manners. Are you looking to start trouble? Yeah, maybe a couple oh, eye darts in there and that would be good. It's close. It's so close. And he actually popped around a bunch. He, was, he appeared as a bunch of different characters. Yeah, we, well, he's a great, he's a great theatre actor yeah. in uh, the UK and we, we have some other fun... Uh, smaller and then here comes the big guy. We got to make the uh, the Argo kind of <laughs> come up <laughs> just, just, yeah, a, yeah. just a tiny <laughs> bit. <laughs> well, he's big in real life too. So yeah, yeah. Ain't like we're gonna be Maybe here six long. foot six or something. Ain't like they're gonna be here long either. <laughs> what the hell are you all going on about? It's very simple. We're OMC, and OMC belongs to Sato Khan, and Sato Khan doesn't like people messing. With his things, you got me? Sato Khan? Is that your boss? Are we supposed to be scared of him or something? Yeah. Noyer, run up to the holding cells. Make sure everything's ready for us. I don't want to move them through the ship until we have... See again, it's just a, a subtle yeah. emotion, right? Hi, sir. You don't usually get that. Well, yeah, I mean, that's when you've got the performance well, capture. Yeah. You, can, you, you know, the actors can play and they can do the stuff right. together. Yeah. You need good actors because they're, Absolutely. they're sitting there in, you know, gray suits with, with camera rigs on their heads. So they've got <laughs> yeah. to pretend they're Holding on a spaceship sure. and coming out. But if you have good ones, then you can really get, um, you know, the, 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 the subtlety that you got with that, which is great. And there's, that's all the way through, which is, I think people, it's going to be, that's what's going to make it different to what you've what you've seen before. Now, and also, by the way, if I if I decided I didn't really want to see that scene play out, and I just came out of my point of view, old man, while that was happening, went and path to his locker, opened the locker, put his flight suit on, and then and then headed off down to the flight deck and gotten into the uh, his Gladius at the front. And you could see that. You could just say, oh, I don't want to, this thing's happening over here. I'm not interested in that, and turn around and do that. And I actually did it on a couple of playthroughs just for the fun of it. Um, but yeah, it's cool. So again, this is tactile. I, you pick up, you hold the helmet. It's a bit janky. Some of our pickup, take up stuff still needs uh, quite a lot of work. Even if you guys are playing three zero, you see that. Uh, there's a couple of the Marines heading off um, to the uh, the brig. And the engineer, you there? Yeah, engineers never in a rush. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they, they they fix things on their own time. Exactly. Yeah. That might have been Tannen, I think. Those Marines though, oh, they were running for it on a break. Yeah. Uh, that Tagaka character too. I'd, I'd be remiss not to mention that the character team had a lot of fun with that, uh, because typically we we try to share bodies and meshes uh, all we can. But with this guy, nope. He was gonna have to be a big guy, huge arms, big tattoos, huge neck. You know, like it. It, it was really fun to make that make that character. He's the most interesting. And I got to write a um, done for a while. tattoo doc, which is always fun. Yeah, that was a that tattoo was, doc. There was a whole there was a whole story behind yeah. the tattoos. Like yeah. before he was a criminal, and yeah, yeah. yeah it's great. And like the ones he got on quarterdeck while he was in prison. And hey, finish the work on your scanner. It should help you track down. And Sophie's got some great, great Fly safe. The eye rigging that happens. So I just again, some some of these subtle emotions I'm just not used to seeing uh, on them. So S Sophie Wu does a great job of. So we got. Uh, we could. Room. We could. I always when I do it, I inspect the helmet first because I think that's fine. Nice. And I <laughs> put it on, and uh, there's a flip we could do. Uh, and then we'll we'll get it. And again, this is another example of, you know, we're in. This is live gameplay. It's sort of trigger because you know we don't control old man, so we want to sort of show off the fun of you know, that Top Gun launch kind of thing. Yep, totally. Uh, so we trigger that. But if you wanted to not deal with that, you could hit the key and be just sitting here in the cockpit watching it all happen in front of you, rather than the more cinematic stuff that's happening. Sure. And then Cetel calls you from you know. The yeah, yeah. No. So the ATC either from the point of view here or or seeing this, but you know. This, with going for a cinematic feel, so I, you know, personally, I think this is how I would see it. I think a lot of players would do that. But if but you don't want it, you want to be all point of view, then you can have that too. 
And we still are sort of space lighting, still has a, has a ways to go, like the live um, sort of, uh, uh, you know, dynamic GI that we're working on isn't yeah. in quite yet. So that will add a lot to... And also with all the, the camera cuts we're turning on and off, uh, at certain lights, we're opening doors, we're doing all this stuff in real time. And again, because it's not in a video, this is all actually in the world right beside the player happening. So there's just a bigger challenge with it. Um, and it's why you see the frame rate drop a little bit because there's <laughs> sure. a lot more sh stuff getting drawn here. And you're also seeing yeah, some things like landing you gear saw some jittering on the landing gear because it's all physicalized and there's sort of uh, there was some conflict between the animation and the actual physics simulation, which is all stuff we'll dial sure, in and won't be there uh, in the final one. But you know it's still early stages, so it's also worth throwing out that I mean the the level of detail on the the flight deck crew i mean that whole handoff thing is i mean that's all like yeah legit. that's another another steven better specialist <laughs> well, I, 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 but think he, uh, I think he got hold of really some, really yeah he got hold of some proper carrier deck crew and and they sort of worked out what different people would do in this sort of situation because it's slightly different for this than you would be on a sure uh, on an aircraft carrier um because we're not really have a catapult launch uh but you know we kind of have it for fun and uh, you know Luckily, you don't need this many people to launch a ship in the persistent universe. But yeah, so uh, it was a little bit dark in this, this capture. Yeah. You hear, but the, yeah, they were doing actual semaphore. Uh, that would be for uh, yeah. Uh, well, on the I think the issue, the thing was that we just put in a change in the lighting state for the launch, which is this emergency, and it needs a few more lights because like, you can't. See, yeah, yeah, they look like little Tron guys. You can't see the guys right telling you what to do, but they're there, like giving you the spin your engines up. Okay, uh, they do the triangle over them for you to go to hover mode. And then uh, here's us sort of launching, like, and you can see that's loading a bunch of stuff at the outside. A little bit outside. of a lot of the exterior, the address usually. Yeah, yeah. And then we, we cut out to the third person to show it, and now we're sort of out flying uh, in in sort of the outskirts of the coil where Shubin's base. So the coil. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the coil? Uh, yeah, the, I mean the coil is sort of the remnants of um, Odin One. So the first planet in the system got kind of smashed up when the the star Novad. Uh, so it sort of created this kind of weird sort of electromagnetic anomaly. So it's just these like massive chunks of like planetary debris and this weird sort of perpetual ongoing ion electrical storm type thing. So it's a very like precarious place to, to go. And uh, but, you know, mining companies like try to risk it because there's a lot of minerals in there. Um, but also criminals use it because it's so dangerous that people won't follow follow them in there. So it's a very kind of sketchy. Right. And the OMC's base is kind of in the coil. Yeah, yeah they so operate I, And, I, and I think the coil, I, you know, like we were looking about maybe about uh, 10,000 10, 10, kilometers in radius, so about 20,000 kilometers in diameter, about 10 times uh, the size of one of our sort of Earth planets like it's been exploded because we scale things down, which is, you know, our, our Earth planet, like an Earth-style planet, would be about 1,000 kilometers in radius. Um, and actually, the tech that's doing this is not a background. It's a it's a full on sort of volumetric, volumetric. Uh, kind of cloud tech. Um, well, you can see the lighting coming through. That's the biggest challenge: is is the the volumetric lighting through such a such a um, such a structure. And uh, the graphic guys have been working on it quite quite a lot. Um, and and it's still coming along. Uh, yeah, and it's I mean it's also early days. I mean, like the the, the issue that we have here is it doesn't handle the scale that we need to go for. The you know the big as I said right now, I think this is probably maybe about uh, I don't know 800 kilometers in radius, not 10,000 kilometers in radius. Yeah. Uh, so the the fur the further version of the tech will allow us to have different sizes and scales of uh, sort of VDB clouds or whatever. Mm -hmm. uh, and we use, it's this open VDB format, which is sort of a... Um, a, a it's a voxel a, format. It's yeah, a voxel format that does the sparse. It was actually first developed by DreamWorks uh, right. to use uh, in the, um, uh, the, uh, the one where they go to the clouds with Jack, the, 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 the kitty, you know, the, the Antonio Banderas movie. My Puss kids watch it Puss all the Boots? Yeah. Shrek? Yeah, Puss and Boots. Oh. Oh. Puss and Boots, and they go up to the, <laughs> the giant's land in the clouds. Huh. Anyway, so, but that was where the VDB uh, was first developed uh, by the team of DreamWorks. But uh, we use it because it's, it allows you to sort of define where the voxels yeah. are, and you don't have to have a regular, um, you know, uh, grid for it right oh. and, and we could run it through our resource compiler in real time so they export uh, basically a frame from Houdini or, or fume effects or something some crazy level of sim and I liked it because a lot of people will think this is just a skybox and actually I think it's uh, it's right about here that we go into quantum and you actually see the things not a skybox at all <laughs> you know yeah. it, it's an actual fully volumetric thing and I've never seen anything quite so soft in a game um, 
uh, normally when you have volumetric clouds and these kind of things, it's the, the edges are never soft. You always see this undersampling or um, uh, lines and some sort of blend. But uh, yeah, it's, it's it's some of the best I've seen. Yeah, and it's, like I said, for the final one, the much more scale, there'll be ability to have different sizes of it and a lot more put together. So you'll actually have a lot more of it and a lot more activity and a lot more sort of animation in terms of like lightning and stuff going on in the background and it'll also be different depending right, that's on when you really get a good yeah, feel so you for get it a sense there. of that yeah. will be um, you know full full volumetric and get a, and get a it'll allow because we we have this whole progression where you know there's outside the coil on the edge of the coil you go deeper and as you get more deeper it becomes more and more dangerous it's like going into the eye of the storm yeah. basically um, and then, you know, one thing I just call out is, you know, some of our UI is, uh, you know, and our HUD stuff. It's all very early. I, we rolled out a little bit here for the three zero stuff, but it's all a bit clunky. It's going to get better because, uh, you know, if I was criticizing uh, this portion of it, it would be mostly about kind of the feel in the cockpit, um, you know, how easy it is to navigate, use your different devices. So that's all something that <coughs> we have to spend a fair amount of time dialing in for Star Citizen, but also for... Um, squadron and, and you know f there'll be a big focus uh, you know in this coming year actually to really sort of dial down the dial in the feel of you know being in the cockpit and, and flying it because I we've, we've been adding so many features for Star Citizen itself that we have you know a lot of the sort of subtleties of the feel side of things have, has have been neglected but you know it's now as a lot of the features are in place to allow us to do this sort of stuff we've got to get back to uh, making that aspect of it work well. And, and that would include like the traversal here. So like you add to your sort of first navigation point, like a nav point, like a wing commander, and then the next one to go towards the, the starfarer. And, and you know you should see that sort of animate in as your nav point. Once you get to it and then you've got there, it would say, okay, shh, now here's the next one. Uh, and, and here is uh, his actually kind of fun. Uh, this is a this is a Nathan Dursley special. Oh yeah? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, because he's, he, he, he's like, oh, I, w I really want to, make the traversal to arrive at the Starfarer wreck kind of interesting and how about these two huge oh, massive asteroids sure, that, that are interesting. kind of close to each other that you have to fly between which is which is uh, what we're doing uh, yeah here. yeah and I think you're totally right on the the situational awareness for the players kind of the the big thing that we'll continue to work on um, and you know it's it's not exactly the hardest thing either it, it just it, it can easily take a backseat as you're developing features tech uh, figuring out ways to put this in, figuring out ways just to get this stuff working, and then from there you you, you make it feel a little better, make it play a little more fun, make yeah, give yeah, well, the player the information to make well, those decisions. I feel like this year we spent a huge amount of time um, just rolling out a lot of tech and features and trying to get them basically you know working in a basic sense. And this coming year there'll be more features and tech, but also there needs to be a lot more polish. Uh, in uh, for what we're doing in Squadron, definitely because we're trying to obviously want to get this in people's hands, but also for Star Citizen itself. And again, here's another example of a sort of cutaway to establish the scenes. You can come up and see the the reclaimer and you know who's uh, you know who's piloting it. Um, it's a little dark here, but the actual idea is you come up and then sort of the camera as you see it, the camera takes over to give you more more uh, and more of a close up. So you know this was this still would need a lot more tiling in for the 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 final uh the game but uh, it's it's kind of nice and again you know uh if you looked over at uh, um you know uh mark hamill or gary oldman in his in his ship you would see him talking and you go up and you went to the window she's talking as well as being on the rtt so they're actually live live yeah they're actually ops. there like that's yeah. that's what always blows my mind with these things because so often that's been video or like and again i can't really think of another game that's actually projecting uh, a, a volume from one place into the other, like uh, onto a screen like this, and even her performance is quite good. Uh, again, and she was not even a you know like a top tier sort of character that we had to do. This was a uh, this is kind of a side quest, a side, a side mission. Yeah, so she's uh, well, and also I mean that's because that's not even her face too. Like no, that's right. That's actually well, uh, that's a combination of a couple NPC faces plus one of our HR. Our HR director's uh, geometry. <laughs> no, we, we we have we actually uh, there was actually I can't forget the name of the actress, but she was uh, really good. Uh, uh, but Katie I don't think McGinnis, we scanned her. Was the only yeah, I think. Yeah. Okay. But I think the the thing is on we have quite a lot of uh, heads and faces that we scan, but we haven't processed them all yet. So a lot of time, like you'll see it in terms of some of our slavers or say uh, you know Donna Atar here, we kind of put an NPC head in while we're waiting to have the the head finished or built out. Um, but you know, like so, for instance, when the OMC prisoners came out, those three guys, those were the actual actors yep. that we had, and you can really sort of see it. And we we have we just have so many. I think there was 
uh, in terms of scanned heads, there was way over a hundred scanned heads, yep. and we still got a lot to to uh, oh, finish so off. Scan it's more. more the sort of secondary characters now, because all the main characters, and even you know, all the a, all, obviously all the A-list cast is there, but then also the B kind of characters are mostly there. And now it's there's you know the smaller parts like the pilot of the of the reclaimer that you come across and stuff like that. Um, but again, here's where the, you know here's where I think the the user experience, the UI for the for the traversal uh, isn't there at the moment and it needs to be so you know the one thing in this playthrough we kind of know where the points are um, because we sort of constructed it yeah but from a new user standpoint you wouldn't really totally. know um, and so that's again that's all sort of um, detail and polish stuff that we're starting to work on but the point of the vertical slice was really to you know put you know the different elements that you would experience in the game together right? so features, it's like yeah. you know aboard the ship that you're based interacting with the crew the sort of emotional side of that then the flying then they're running around on ground and doing it all fluidly, not having a loading screen or a transition animation or anything like that. So that was kind of our, and that, and that's, so this is that is what the vertical slice is really about to show. Uh, but a lot of the, the the detail and the subtlety and the fluidity of it, um, you know, will get dialed in as we finish off Squadron this uh, coming year. Chosen performance is quite good too. Oh, I'll stop mentioning performances. Everybody's performances. <laughs> yeah, well, she's uh, the yeah, the, the, she's the actress who plays Trio is really good. She's I don't know, uh, you know, UK folks pro probably know her from Paul Dark. Right, right. Um, but uh, um, I, I think she's a. Uh, we just lucky to have a lot of really great people. Yeah. Uh, no, I mean, and again, it's like all whether it's major characters or very very minor characters, like people really. Yeah. I feel like people. Huh? One of the other things too is this is this is about halfway through the game, if I'm not mistaken, uh, or so. Oh, you mean so story-wise? Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's not halfway little, through the game. Or it's before, before that. It's probably about. It's probably just about a bit before third. About a third. Yeah. Three. So it just and just to mention that you know that's why there's no there's really no player hand holding at this point, right? You've already yeah you've already gone through your you know um, learning how to use the nav map, yeah, we, learning we, how to do things. So that's that's generally why there's not a ton of that either. Um, yeah, no, we well, we but basically, still we basically yeah. So what happens is you when you first um, arrive on your uh, posting, which is the UE um, Stanton, uh, we we have a fair amount of missions that you run, and during those missions, uh, we sort of in the in the game itself teach you how teach to you. do things. Yep. You know? uh, old man sort of coaches you, and you sort of learn all these basics of scanning and traversal and combat, and then by the time you get here, you'll have learned them all. So uh, that still doesn't. Excuse the fact that uh, yes, our yes, yeah, UX yeah, and UI can be better, but <laughs> but yeah, that that I mean, we we did we constructed because you know I hate I hate these you know I you know, whatever you play Call of Duty and you got to go to the shooting range You're like I don't want to go to the shooting range I want to get into the story. It's a little overt. Yeah. yeah, yeah, no, and I don't like the overt training. Well, either. we tried There's to also I mean we tried to be that. a little bit more con cognizant of that where it's like the people will ask if you want help. And if you say yes, then you can do it. And because people have been playing Arena Commander and, and stuff like that, so right. it's sort of a unique experience where like they they can enter into this game being fully aware how to do how to do things, already. everything in the yeah, ship. Yeah, no, it's true. Uh, actually, it's yeah. And then, so I'd like to point out here one thing that didn't make our vertical slice. We're kind of a little bummed about it. We had a whole sort of scanning. There's a whole radar and scanning stuff that you are not seeing here that almost made a bit din and we kind of ran out of time but here you would actually do a scan you would scan these you'd get a readout and it would actually say you know mercy Gutierrez, and it would actually say that she's 135 years old yeah her date of birth and stuff like yeah, that. yeah and, and you're like well hang on a second they this is a bit weird she's flying a cutlass and they're doing a patrol pattern yeah but yeah she's you know the idea is the slavers have got a jacked uh, ids and stuff um, and and the scanning actually in a lot of this here finding Trejo and even when we get down onto the planet, uh, you know, because there's an FPS scanning thing where you can sort of do almost a little like the you know the Batman stuff where you can sort of do a scan and you know analyze where the weak points are. So in a lot of what you see later on, um, really you would do scanning to figure out some of the stuff. We know like oh we oh we get a battery from over here or whatever. That's because we sort of know the layout, but that's because the scanning was sort of missing. Um, and I'll, the other thing I we have a whole new. GPU shield effect is pretty cool, but I, I, I think you don't really see it much. I don't think we saw it here. I think it was in. Uh, we didn't get it fixed in time uh, to work in the vertical slice, uh, but it will be something that we're coming to um, uh, uh, Star Citizen like a three one, and uh, it will be in square. And it's very cool because now we have GPU particles. We've got this uh, 
so we call it field. sane distance field around the uh, all the ships which conform to the exterior of the ship so you get actually the proper uh, shape and we can run particles and they get attracted over it so when a you know an energy hits on a shield you can sort of see them spread out over the shape of the of the ship it's sort of the thing that you would use in high-end visual effects and pre-rendered stuff but we can sort of now do it in uh, the gpu stuff which is pretty good and i believe this was uh, robbie elms is one of our designers uh, uh was the was piloting uh, i did tell him that he didn't really follow we actually don't the scene with haynes he asks you if you got any tips and one of the things you say right dave yeah. is uh, conserve best pilots ammo, yeah. yeah conserve their ammo he is not conserving. He is his not ammo. conserving his <laughs> ammo. Firing for effect. Yeah. He is room brooming. And again, this yeah, is like I said. You know, I, I feel like uh, you know one of the big focuses anyway. I'm, I'm going to push on is the sort of feel of space combat and also the ground combat that's coming uh, as we as we're trying to polish off Star uh, Squadron, and that will come across obviously into Star Citizen because I sort of feel like a lot of that we still need to dial that in properly. Because we'd be so busy putting features in, you know, procedural planets, all this stuff, which, by the way, you see a procedural planet right here, um, that we haven't had time to really get the basics back up to how I would like them. But now's the time to do it. So that will be, uh, you know, coming down the road. And uh, I'm kind of looking forward to that because I think, you know, having a really good feeling combat, whether you're flying around or on ground, then with a sort of story and this kind of environmental design, uh, which is, you know, Nathan Dersley, we sort of just reorganized our kind of team structure so Nathan has now become the art director for our overall squadron in charge of the ships the environments everything in it um, and uh, you know I think it's he, I mean I mean he you know you, you've all known Nathan's amazing ship videos he's got forever. grand visions he's got so yeah it's yes, gonna be great definitely. although I I did you know the, the idea here right is that we, we've got some uh, decaying old satellites yeah <laughs> because <laughs> might have gone a bit and and i did say well can i why was some debris a little like wally but i didn't really <laughs> mean it <laughs> literally <laughs> why like wally, it's wally. Uh, wally. So, oh, junk. so in the final game there probably won't be quite this much <laughs> because you know i don't know how many satellites this would be but the idea is it's like 20 all this this this, broke this, up. this this um you know moon was a sort of uh, used for sort of chemical production and factory. Yeah, gas extraction. We actually, they, they profiled them in uh, this month's gym point. Oh, okay. Uh, so and yeah. it, is it is and toxic? I, com game? I commented on uh, how much trash was in the atmosphere. <laughs> well done. Well done, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> and the atmosphere is toxic, this one, or no? Uh, well, I think, no, I think we were... I think we it was breathable. breathable. It was breathable? Yeah, okay. we, we wanted to have it breathable. Um, you know, we also like to see people's faces as yeah, much better. That's true. Yeah. Um, so here would be the, uh, the actual gameplay here. We're actually going straight to where Trejo is, but the gameplay is you sort of arrive and uh, you'd find the the, the slaver ships, um, you know, spoofing as someone else that then they attack you. Then once you get rid of them, you've got to look for Trejo. You don't know where she is and you start to scan and you're looking for uh, any kind of, you know, EM signal or IR signal. And, you're, and so you sort of slowly work your way through. There's probably some false positives. You scan through and then you'll find her in here. And that's using the scanning gaming mechanic. But uh, again, like I said, that didn't make it for uh, the demo, which is unfortunate because it was almost there. Uh, but it wasn't all the way there. So we, we can show it. But, but there'll be more gameplay here where you're sort of, you're basically sleuthing around. Because what we want to do is have all these tools because they'll they work they'll work great in Star Citizen the big sandbox, but also in Squadron. You you know it's not just a straight on the rails shooter like you may see with uh, you know a, a typical sort of you know like a Call of Duty or something. You have a lot of kind of more RPG elements. You have some more uh, sleuthy elements, some stealth elements, uh, and you know uh, things puzzles right. Like uh, you know you'll see a puzzle will come up here, and it'll be a better puzzle in the final game because again. Uh, we're missing some of our scanning that sort of helps you figure out stuff, but you can pick things up, move things, use them, do all that stuff. And should mention, it's a sandbox puzzle too. So, like, you know, you, they don't have you don't have to fly your ship in here. Um, it's cool that they did because it looks amazing uh, when you get your ship in here. But uh, I mean, you could park outside, you could zero G in, you could take your time, you could go explore the planet, come back. Like, there's a lot of yeah. again, it, it's sandbox. It's 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 do it how you, do it how you want to do it. Solve the puzzle, but solve it in the way that you want to solve it. Um, yeah, I mean, you know, and as we'll see in the sort of approach to the the slaver base from here, like, you know, they take a very kind of low, stealthy type approach to it. But, you know, you could just as easily say, you know, screw it, I'm going to just fly right at it and just open fire and, and try and take them head on. And that's a viable way to. Yeah, yeah. Well, and that's, uh, that's part of. I mean, we can talk to it when we get a bit lower, but that's not. Yeah. That would be in the final game way better signposted where you get down, you have your. Uh, you know, options of like, because the reason why you'd fly low is 
you know the slavers have a whole bunch of radar and AA guns set up which will you know basically take you out if you're flying too high so you've got to get a low under it but you can decide you know when, where we land is the back entrance that's shut down right but you could go in the front door and, and really just go out in a straight all brawling out fight it's kind of up to you i gotta mention the rendering here though there's the the volumetric fog the the, the new fog tech the hr fog tech plus the shadows plus the sun plus the dynamism of the thing moving around you've got Nobody shadows here. moving crawling across the ship and all these kind of things it's just again it's uh yeah, and it really for, takes it this far. Yeah, and the, yeah, no, it really gives you a nice mood. I mean, and there's also this like, there's a gun there you can pick up. There'll be a bunch of. They'll actually, I think we're gonna have a bunch of personal possessions yeah. from Treya. We didn't to quite go get through a her for stuff. This. She's got a blanket, and, and you can't see here, but it actually says slavers on the back. I don't know why, and maybe it's just uh, how it got crunched when we, uh, you know, created it so it would go on YouTube. But uh, it's a lot more subtlety when I'm playing it on my screen. I can actually <laughs> see things like. And we're still dialing in the RTT things, especially in the interior of the helmet. So that's now like an RTT projected into the yeah, helmet glass. So that's, you know, just you know, the positioning probably a little bit. It's a little washed out right now. Yeah, and we're actually missing. We got some We got some sort of a, a, a first-person glass shader that we're going to use for your visor and your cockpit. Uh, there'll be subtle. It won't be as heavy-duty as the glass shader you see from third-person, but it'll give you a slight feeling of being in encased in glass, which I think will be useful here because you don't really feel that there's like a there's a helmet on here. Uh, but we don't want something that will have a big glare or get in your way, so there's a sort of in between it. And I and I have to, by the way, I have to call out. I mean, we've played, we haven't talked about it, but the music. Oh yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, Jeff Sinelli has done an amazing job, and the music adds so much to the sense of flow uh, in 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 what we've shown here and will be in the game. And we've really approached it with a very uh, sort of filmic. Uh, I mean, you know, Jeff's a big film composer. I mean, you know, me and Dave worked with him on Outlander, which was fun but he's done a lot of other things most recently the most recent pirates movie and you know he's worked with Hans Zimmer a whole bunch and don't know he's got a big long did the Pacific did a whole bunch of other stuff um, and uh, it's great I mean it's because we we've got this what we call this music logic system uh, which is sort of an evolution of a lot you know, you know a long time ago in Wing Commander there was uh, kind of you know the origin FX which was this idea of the dynamic music but this is a whole nother level beyond that uh, in terms of being able to sort of move and modulate between different pieces depending on what's happening or what point you are in the story or the mission or whatever and and uh, you know it's you can, you're kind of sort of hearing it here and I think that is again another element that you may not think of but it really adds to the sense of of uh, you know place and mood. Oh, that view is just incredible. With this uh, with the infinite view distance is just it's just a different experience and again like in a lot of everybody will be used to this being a skybox or something and <laughs> the fact that they, again we've gone from the edges through Shubin through the coil that's why Sean's going to come to every person's house and remind them while they play that yes not a skybox this is not a skybox <laughs> <not a> sky <laughs> yeah well I mean that's the thing right that's that's the difficult thing with the that's the, what makes all of this harder is, yeah. is the yeah. scale and I you know I know people oh well the frame rate's low right now you know like yeah we, we know it's we slow know. <laughs> but no one else is trying to you know, update or render or simulate this much stuff, right. and we definitely have uh, solutions to bring the frame rate back and performance. It just takes time because it's a very complicated uh, yeah. task, and I, mean, I have no doubt we'll get there because we have yep. some of the best engineers in the industry. But and again, like I mean, we'll, when we were watching this during the uh, the the show, like I mean, I, the same thought hit me as I was just watching it now, where it's like you think back as to where we've come from, waking yeah. up in the bunk, and there hasn't been a single load screen no yeah. which really immerses like I it mean, has the effect of really investing you in that in that moment yeah um yeah and anything that pulls you out of it is just is super duper obvious and like again you see multiple materials on the ground you've got all kinds of different gloss this is a, you know, well no I, I, and I, and I think and then that's one through the cloud and that's one of the key things here is that idea that like everything's fluid right so you just the whole story is fluidly lived out from your point of view and there are like you know no loading screens you know no canned animation while you go to the the next level uh, and and that's not something that you normally see in a game and i think and you certainly don't see it at this level of scale and and and, and i so i think when you get down and you start to actually play it that will be one of the things that will make squadron uh, really special yeah i really like the um debris coming down from the atmosphere that's a Funky. Yeah. Well, I mean, yeah. there meant to be these, you know, bits of the decaying satellites breaking off and coming down, and then you would sort of get an indication about the AA guns because they're sort of shooting the ones that are getting close. 
And then here, like again, our sort of radar and contacts thing isn't happening. But if you got closer, you would sort of see the the, the indication of signal of the AA guns and the fact that you could potentially getting in radar range and then see that's why you would want to duck down low so this is sort of almost the idea with it in the final implementation is it's almost like a stealth approach you know like your solid snake or someone doing yeah but you're yeah. trying to keep low and keep out of the sight get out of the radar and if you get up too high suddenly you know you would you'd feel the the radar pulse against you and if you're too long it'll detect you so you got to drop down totally in line with what you were saying before which is just the the readability of the player like for example you know i'm sure people watch this and go well why the heck is this guy flying this low this is kind of a dangerous a dangerous approach to make but yeah it's a dangerous approach because it's under the radar be like literally under the radar um you know there's AA guns firing there's these kind of things so we, this is a choice that, that the player will make should they want to approach it like this, not, you know, guns blazing and, 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 and uh, uh, trying to take out a whole bunch of turrets or something like this. So uh, it's, definitely, um, it's definitely something we have to work on in terms of the readability. But uh, again, we just wanted to get it all together so you had a full playthrough experience. And then it's a matter of us playing these a bunch of times and going, oh, actually, yeah, we need to we need to tell that a little better, or we need to we need to uh, inform the player a tiny bit more. Look this direction, move this direction. Yeah. Well, I mean, that's what I was saying. Like they sort of, uh, you know, the the, the, the the HUD read and all the rest of the stuff in terms of like your traversal and where you're going, or whether you're getting a radar signal again, you know, like you're getting scanned or anything. Yeah. We would sort of need that. But yeah, I love this. I mean, this stuff. Where he's following the pipes. Or the well, and also just the feel, right? The, yeah, the yeah, clouds, definitely. the sun in the background, and and here's sort of a cutaway where we're cutting away to right show. And this is why you're you flying under the radar, exactly. Yeah, exactly. And if you actually went up, you know, they would be shooting at you and stuff like that. So, uh, and and you know, it is a sandbox, right? So you could you could try so you to could risk try to if yeah, you sure, to. Yeah. you can make it. But uh, yeah, no, I, this is that's like a yeah, a still from a movie or something. It's fantastic. And uh, you know we, we 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 didn't really show up, but you have a journal and uh, from Trejo where she sort of called out the different areas. So yeah. as you as you would be coming along to the base up here in a bit, she would have marked the possible entrances. Like okay, here's the yeah. here's a back abandoned entrance. Maybe we can sneak in the back air, which is what we're going yeah. to do. Or here's the main landing pad where the slavers are coming in and out. But she's basically downloaded a bunch of her research on the slavers, and then as you're moving around, you can use that to figure out. Yeah, okay, basically, yeah, she figured out that they were gonna that they were ha this is where they were holed up. So she was trying to plan out assaults. So she was like, you get her notes of basically how she would assault it if she wanted to try different things and stuff. And and then yeah, once you see the item, the specific things that she's calling out, whether it's the AA guns and stuff you know you can access her sort of journal notes about that type of thing and hear commentary and all this stuff here on the on the gainy moon uh, is all the same technology that you guys are having in the pu right now uh basically this is procedural planet with all the procedural ecosystems procedural object placement and uh, you know like we've talked about before still we like to be able to allow the designers allow the environment artists to go in and to to hand place this kind of stuff because in the end even without the the hand placement you're not going to get exactly like what you're seeing here this is you know they've authored this so that the, well, the approach crafted. is yeah, really yeah. nice I mean, this is crafted the, the plus th plus procedural so it's I mean, it's a nice thing yeah to combine. i mean So that's when he mentions them. The, yeah, and it the would, and, and then on your HUD, it would, it would actually signal, and so some of that Pop kind up. of detail. I mean, uh, you know, as you guys that follow three zero, the UI's been one of the things that have been sort of holding us up. Uh, so we're still behind on some of the UI that we would dial in here. Uh, but again, that would be sort of indicating where you would land and stuff like that. And then the other thing I think we've talked about is we're going to be dialing in more of the atmospheric flight model because we don't. That's not fully all there. We've got plans for it this coming year and again that would make that more interesting and challenging coming down here in the low areas dealing with a little bit of you know flight bucking around some turbulent and I think our plan is to make this a fairly stormy planet longer term so we got some weather tech that's going to come online down the road that would also be you know almost think of uh, kind of the approach in for aliens when they were coming in yeah, to LV Hadley's Hope. Some really nice VFX work there from the VFX team. Let's call it the the smoke particles are really nice, nice and volumetric. So this is sort of like the back, the seat, you know, the the shut off back door. The, there is an access, but maybe there's a way we can sneak in. Shields offline. Weapon systems offline. 
And by the way, we, there's, uh, we're, we're not really using it. The personal inner thought um, allows you to exit your seat now, which is how you would access emotes and various things that you wouldn't normally see to interact. It's more a thought. Like, oh, I, I want to leave the seat or uh, I want to salute to this person. Uh, that's kind of the personal inner thought mode, which you access by hitting F and you click on the little circle um, icon and brings up a whole menu, radial menu for you. Yeah, I like uh, something you had said about it before, which was uh, just not remembering all the shortcuts. Because um, I forget the shortcuts. In fact, honestly, sometimes we change them so often that I, I can't keep track. So sometimes I just look down, and uh, yeah, it, because know, the inner thought's there now, it actually makes it a lot easier. Yeah, well, I a, don't remember. The, I mean, the long-term goal that I have is, yeah, you know, you, uh, you should be able, like, say, if you're using keyboard and mouse, you should be able to play the all from keyboard and mouse. You know, turn on, uh, you know, couple mode or decouple mode or turn your headlights on when you're in the cockpit by clicking on the buttons or you, you shouldn't have to know all the hotkeys. But if you do know the hotkeys, you'll be, you know, quicker. So it's sort of like, I don't know, uh, an RTS, you know, you're playing StarCraft. If you know the hotkeys, you can just do a lot more stuff quicker, but you don't need to know. You can just use your mouse to click on things and icons and it'll be fine. And so that's the goal here. So you should, you, you, you know, simple with a mouse and keyboard or a gamepad or a joystick. Um, you should be able to do most of the stuff, and you know if you learn the hotkeys, you you now don't need to actually physically interact with some of the stuff. You can just sort of shortcut to holster your weapon or um, you know drop something or something like that. Yeah, and this is one of our uh, more uh, I, I guess you know your typical power puzzle where you've got to uh, yeah. get a battery into this. Well, I think the fi the final bit. one that was meant to happen here is it's actually got a burnt out battery. So you get into it, you see the battery's burnt out, you need to find a fresh one. You would also have your tactical visor that would tell you that there was weak points you could use your pour on. We didn't really introduce the pour here, we just pulled it out. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But in the gameplay, the idea was that you'd find the pour and then you would be able to use it. Here's a manual override, which is going to be a feature on most of our automatic doors. So if you, like, so if you, like, cut the power to a, you know, like, a, you know, like whatever, a uh, space station or something, you can lock all the doors down and then they have manual overrides. You can open them manually like that. So it's another way to potentially like mess with people or breach or whatever we manually override it to get out of that room and now we've got to find a battery sure you can probably get ai stuck up or something like that if you're ever gonna so and yeah you know, I, I think in the final day this wouldn't be quite as like a walk over and there's a battery right there on <laughs> uh, uh, so but yeah i mean this would be a puzzle you'd use your tactical advisor you'd scan around you'd be looking for an energy source if you get a, a indication of that yeah it'd be a lot then, more hinting right and then you okay yeah there's some power over here you go there and then you would take it and then do what we're going to do now because yeah i'm sure watching this fresh you're like well you know he knows exactly where to go exactly what to grab and yeah it's true he does he knows exactly where to go and exactly what to grab but uh we'll, we'll inform the player a little bit but not 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 lead him right to yeah it. yeah i mean this simple is simple things like green doors red doors and you know that kind yeah. of stuff. it's still early days as far as dialing all that in this is again vertical slice uh to sort of indicate all how all the systems work together but yeah so this is the idea i mean the idea is it's not always flying and shooting things or running around on foot and shooting things sometimes you have to do puzzles so the puzzle here was to figure out how to get the power back on uh again you know you can get the key reward. go back to your point of view and this yeah. could all happen from your point of view but we do nice cinematics to show off the great scenes that we have yeah and to uh, you know uh, give the give the sense of that little player uh the, the player a sense of accomplishment in that moment right because it's a tiny little victory he's just made so yeah victory And the other thing that we don't have in at the moment is uh, the plan is to have a uh, sort of kind of 3D visor map. So in areas, as long as you get the schematics of the download, which in the case of Trejo, you would get it. Um, so you could sort of see where you were generally in, in the area. So, so yeah. it's, you know, it's, it's kind of like a local 3D map. And that would, you know, the radar's not actually going to be really in the middle down there. I think we're going to put it on the top right. And the radar would actually switch from this circular thing to this kind of to the 3D, 3D sort of one. yeah wireframe schematic of where you are, and you would see a pulse of you. And if there was people near making noises, you would see pulses of them. So if anybody's played Zelda: uh, Breath of the Wild in, in those divine beasts, you have this kind of 3D mapping, um, and that's exactly what we're looking at. And it's uh, make it a lot easier to navigate things like the Idris and these kind of things without getting lost. Yeah, yeah. Well, because the Idris, I mean, I know it because I've done it so many times. Yeah, now, but I see. When you're first on it, it's so big you totally get lost. Again, here's you probably wouldn't just go straight to this panel. You'd actually go to the door. You can't open it because it's on lockdown. And we're actually going to put a, ra a, a, a shawl over that, I think, a cloth, and then you have to pull it off, and then you would, you know, go out and turn, you know, 
interact with the the UI there and and turn off the the map the uh, lockdown mode. And now you've allowed to come out as a sort of side approach into the main chem line facility. And I'm not sure we we used to have someone here that we yeah we used yeah, to have yeah. a guy that we would take down or anything. well I think the idea was when the shutters the open they get attracted and they they uh. would come into the room and you'd wait for him you should you should then try to kill him. Um, uh, but I don't know why he wasn't there. On uh, it's not it's he's he's gone for a, a little while. He'll probably be back in the future. We still haven't dialed in the the full encounters here because the on the foot combat AI is still very early stages. So we've got a lot of the you know some of the early basic behaviors, but a lot of the subtlety we really want to you know ultimately push that to be as good as anything else that's out there. Maybe even better in combination with some of the. The more um, you know, living the life Sims kind of stuff that we have, which you see on the address, uh, and um, so it's it's I'm actually looking forward to having that come come into into play because you know most shooters when I play them, it's pretty simple stuff. I mean you know they they start shooting at you, they go to cover, they'll pop out of cover and they shoot. Maybe they go to another piece of cover when the cover gets compromised. Maybe they try to flank you, but you know not necessarily that much. Uh, but you know. You know, having a working concert and being a bit more tactical, uh, and also, you know, like, hey, you know, someone should run away if, like, <laughs> yeah, you've killed, totally. <laughs> you've killed five dying. of their buddies. Yeah, maybe yeah. one of them was like, hell, I'm getting the hell out of here. Yeah, I'm like, that yeah. drives me nuts in games and in movies where They're it's like very committed to yeah, their job. I mean, like, you you watch John Wick and you go, <laughs> you know, why does that guy think it's going to go any different for him than the other 50 people John Wick <laughs> yeah. just went through? Uh, so no, I'd like to try to get a bit more, uh, you know, it'd be fun, a bit more personality, you know, like some people are, they're, they're committed and some people aren't so committed. And and we'll see a glimpse of it a little bit later on once we kind of the fight pops off. But like there was some already some nice details that they were starting to get in, where it's people like blind firing over the tops oh, yeah, of yeah. cover. Well, we've yep. got a whole bunch of yeah, Steve Bennett. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've got we actually overran the uh, number of animations the engine supported. Yep. Uh, about a week <laughs> or two ago, there's thirty <laughs> over thirty two thousand. Um, so uh, we're gonna. I mean, Steve's got so much stuff that we've captured and plans. I mean, I've got no doubt at the end of the day when we get it all fully dialed in, it'll be a real really really nice experience with all the AI and before that great that was another example of a puzzle where you know we cut it out and then we carry it move it around that's sort of the grabby hands tactile stuff that we want to get in and there'll definitely be you know stuff along that lines throughout the, the game and you know a bit more obvious because that's the game that if you looked at the approach here you put your tactical visor on it would tell you okay here's a here's a potential weakness back entrance here's the front door you can go through and it was sort of Mark out on the tactile visor, then you make your decision of how your approach is. Yeah, but again, it's very much up to you how you want to how you want to get in there. So we got some nice takedowns here. Yeah, and again, this is we still have a whole bunch of dialing in and the locomotion moving and the the animation for that. Um, here we go. It's so dark. Yeah, but you could have just snuck behind the guy, for example, walked in here. But there's no guarantee he's not walking in behind you or something yep. like this. So yeah, it's a much better thing. Called him. So he talks about the victim. He, he looked up for maybe half a second there, but uh, this is actually a cryo room. This is where they actually put people to sleep, basically. <laughs> yeah, you can see the sort of coffins later on. But yeah, that's basically where the slavers kind of kidnap people. They bring them in here, and then they sedate them and put them on ice and then go sell them. To the Banu. To the Banu. And yeah, this the is Banu. This case, yeah. Because slavery is perfectly fine for the Banu. So yeah, here's the guy who I think is doing it right there. You get a yeah, very firing brief over top. glimpse of it. But yeah, no, unfortunately this was, you know, uh, I think if... Uh, it was really Sean, fast. Sean was playing this. We would play it as not as good FPS players. This is like someone going, "Okay, I'm going to take everyone out right away." Like, but uh, we would probably show spend it off a bit a more bit. time showing off uh, the various. Sure, yeah, he's playing it like you know, he's playing bullet rain, blind fire. <laughs> yeah, yeah, this is, yeah, exactly. He's not dolphin diving or anything yet, but <laughs> uh, he's, uh, I'm sure he'll get there. Bunny Hoppins. But uh, yeah, that's a very very quick bit of combat here, and. Uh, and like Chris is saying, the AI is still uh, getting worked on. A lot of it is, is like readability sort of things. So like those guys should be yelling out from behind cover, I'm in cover, or reloading, or he's moving out to well, the right. Well, they do. They actually you know. do have some of that. Yeah, some you just of got, it. You, they get just killed within about two it. seconds. Yeah, so you're not too. hearing it. Uh, the, yeah, there's <laughs> some of the poor victims. You throw some beer in there, too. It's true. <laughs> Yeah, and a lot of this, I mean, there's a lot of, it's not all fully in here, but there's a lot of sort of implemented triggers. If you went there, you look at it, you'd, you know, you'd say something, or you can, uh, uh, Trejo's notes, and uh, later on, once, once you've rescued Trejo, uh, you go and sort of clear out all the slavers, and she helps you, and she has a lot of comments on everything as it comes along. 
So this is uh, showing off another sort of traverse approach yeah, where he was he was he, he was in combat he went into one of these closets and then saw there was a vent down there that he could jump down and you know uh, if if you've got too many AI guys coming at you or something like that. Yeah, well that's kind of I mean that's in this particular case it was a couple of several levels of reinforcement. And yeah, coming in. And you know, we decided to get back into stealth, go out of eyesight and and move around. And so yeah, again this is that. Yeah, it's it's the Stay alert. Somewhere. Kind of solid snake aspect. Of yeah, things. very. And Free? the uh, the environment team, man, spared no expense down here. This yeah. is just it's dirty. phenomenal work. Keep For some reason, he doesn't hear this door open behind him, but <laughs> <laughs> he's listening to music. Yeah. For the purpose of our demo, he doesn't, <laughs> he doesn't listen <laughs> to the door open behind him. But in the final game, he definitely would be going, huh, what's that? There's a whole bunch of, you know, like the kind of, again, like I said, the, the kind of uh, solid snakey style. Oh, there's something over there, is not. Yeah. Um, and we want to have a fair amount of stealth and tactical aspects to it. And here, I can't remember if you can see quite there, but that actually is a mirror, and you can see us in the mirror. And. Is Trejo. A little worse for wear. Yeah, Eleanor yeah. Tomlinson is the uh, yeah. actress, and she's uh, she's great. And she's 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 actually a fun role. There's a bunch of stuff with her before. Yeah. Uh, in the story, so because she's the advocacy agent in charge of uh, the Odin system, and uh, you go to see her on Fortune's Cross when you first um, get into the system, and she she gives you some leads uh, on various. Yeah, folks. she's sort of. You guys have a bit of a contentious relationship. I'd like to note for any. Perspective game directors too. That's a that's a that's a horrible pose to make a game character do. It's it's, it's so hard <laughs> to do that one right. We had to work on that a lot. Get rid of the chicken wings under the arms and all this kind of stuff. But uh, it was fun to, try not to that hang that them up. I so. did notice everyone in the chat said say no. Say no. I was just about to say <laughs> that. Yeah, <laughs> they were they were being very stingy about their meds. You guys, okay. Trejo's a good girl. She's <laughs> <laughs> she needs help, guy. No, nah, she's a badass too. Oh yeah, she, <laughs> she wrecks, dude. And again, this is using that sort of cinematic cutaway, but you yeah. could be in your point of view and you'd still see her all doing all this sort of stuff. But, you know, it's, we'd much rather you know, movie moments. We'd like to get some of those in. Yeah. Understood. And Lieutenant, make sure Trejo understands this is your op. She goes on again like there's a backstory to that. Yeah, there's a, yeah, that's a little. <laughs> oh, looks like this is your and that show, last bit of facial animation still was never done. Yeah, we, yeah, we got to get that. Mm. Um, and there you go. That tongue up so so that was lips, yeah. the Squadron 42 uh, vertical slice from the holiday live stream. Thank you very much uh, for listening to us. Uh, ramble on about it. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, but uh, And thanks for your support, everybody. Uh, Dave, you want to say anything? Uh, no, thanks for watching. and hope you enjoyed it and can't wait to show you more. Yeah, sure. uh, same here, and just thanks a lot for supporting us and letting us uh, letting us work on this fantastic project. Okay, well, it's done. all right. So thank you very much, and have uh, happy holidays, everybody. Happy holidays. Bye.